Well, good day, folks. It is episode 168 of the Two Chaps Many Cultures live show, the only, the best, the highest rated live daily live show on culture. <laughs> we can just make up whatever we want. We can adopt whatever terminology we want. Can we adopt cultures? And today it is St. Patrick's Day. Wonderfully hosted by our wonderful friends on that beautiful Emerald Isle of Ireland and exported to many places of the world, if not taken and adopted by many parts of the world. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. We're also going to talk about what that might mean around the world. Stick around. To be sure, to be sure, to be sure, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you back? All right. I'm not going down that road because it will only be silly. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day to those of you who truly observe the holiday. I have the suspicion that there might be people who celebrate the day only in spirits, um, plural, and not really in the true meaning. Well, who knows? Who am I to judge? However, there's more people celebrating St. Patrick's Day around the world than there are Irish people on the island of Ireland <laughs> itself. So who knows? Who knows? And we, we took today as, mm, let's say, a launch pad for a conversation around how much adoration for one culture is still cool and fun and in good spirit and where does it end to be fun is there a point when you grab something that isn't yours and try to make it yours and thereby twisting and turning it and maybe reshaping it in a way that it wasn't originally intended to be so i'm curious brett how irish are you you know, I'm not sure at all that I'm any bit of Irish. There is probably, uh, you know, maybe if I searched a long time ago, people in my family have done uh, such uh, inquiries about the, uh, the 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 lineage of our family, and um, certainly while I think so, so, you know, one side of our family <clears throat> traces its uh, traces its past to the original settlers uh, in terms of the colonization and the and and the invasion, let's call it, if uh, and some people use that terminology of of Australia. Well, um, you know that's certainly an aspect of perhaps my um, background. Um, some of that had, has been proven. Uh, a good majority of that is from Ireland. I must say, when I did vi when when I visited Ireland, it is one of those places that I and I've told this to many people. When I've got off the plane, it felt like as close to home as anything I'd ever experienced outside of Australia, in terms of the just the people and the and the just the the way people relate to each other and the culture in general, the way I saw society kind of work. And and of course, you and I are both the same. We ask a lot of questions. So I guess you know, in terms of that, I think well. If there was one culture on the face of the planet, I haven't uh, travelled to all the countries in the world, that's the place where I think I have some some connectedness to, even though I know that I don't, I, I can't put my finger on. So that's that's one aspect, I guess, as close to I come as being Irish. And I'm in one of, and I'm in Chicago, which is one of the largest Irish cities in the US, beside Boston and places, the natural ones that come to mind. Yeah. So if you're Irish or not, let us know where in the world you're watching this. And if you're indeed Irish or of Irish descent, let us know that as well. We would love to hear from you how you feel about St. Patrick's Day being this almost ubiquitous reason for people to en enjoy a good time as much as is safely possible these days. Um, this might actually be the second St. Patrick's Day that is affected by well, our new normal, I guess. Um, but mm. we, I'm not wearing green, neither is Brett, so we're we're not jumping on that bandwagon. However, when I stepped outside the house this morning to pick the dog around the block, 
um, I checked my yard. So here, this is a miniature beer mug. Um, <laughs> And what does it, what do you see here? It is a clover leaf. It's a shamrock. And there's three of those, not a four leaf clover. This not is a three cool. leaf clover. That's the more common one. And why is it three leaves, Brett? I don't know. Well, I'm it's not... the Holy Trinity, right? It's, the Holy Trinity, right. It's, the, it's symbolic of the Holy Trinity in Christianity. And the fun fact is when we talk about cultural appropriation or not, um, I guess in the case of St. Patrick, it, it would be it would be fair to say that it's the large Irish diaspora that is embracing this global tradition now. And there, I think you'll be hard pressed to find any Irish person who would say, "No, no, don't do this because this is ours." I yet have mm -hmm. to meet that Irish person who would say that. Right. Um, so Irish people have been scattered around the globe for for a long, long time for various reasons, as we know, and. As I looked up who was the St. Patrick guy, I realized he wasn't Irish. <laughs> he was, right. There's that. He there's, came from the other there, island. There is that awkward little uh, little little aspect of that. <laughs> well, he. I think the Irish made him one of theirs because he came back, right? So he was first yeah. captured as a teenager. I read today, um, and was like a shepherd or so. And when he earned his priesthood and his. Uh, Bishopric, I guess. Um, he he came back to to the Ireland, uh, to the island of Ire, um, to I guess to do his mission work to bring the gospel of Christianity to the then predominantly um, pagan or or heathen Irish people, and that's fifteen hundred and sixty years ago today, and we're we're still celebrating it now. The interesting fact I found, and this is where cultural, the conversation about cultural appropriation will maybe begin or could deviate. It, as far as I've found, and maybe there are other records that prove this wrong, um, this whole parading about your Irishness and celebrating it in public didn't start in Ireland. It started here in the United States. Mm, so it yeah. was the Irish diaspora who began celebrating their Irishness. To which I have to say kudos to you, Irish people. And it's interesting how back then Irish immigrants needed to or wanted to get a reason to show unity and togetherness and belonging in the face of othering by other settlers, other immigrants to the North American continent who kind of poo-pooed on the Irish. Mm -hmm. So in the face of today, right, we're 2021, uh, we're poo-pooing, or some people in this beautiful country are poo-pooing on others who came after them. So let that sink in. Yeah, no, I think that's the interesting part of it, is that uh, when, you, when you look at the definition of cultural appropriation, it is usually defined by people taking on certain aspects of a tradition or heritage when they don't have a full understanding of the images and uh, and, and the and the things that re that reflect that culture and especially right. when it comes to under uh, 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 like minority cultures or cultures that have suffered a a, a certain degree of diminishment in the past okay so that is certainly true right that is true of the irish that back you know in in certain times irish people were as pilloried as many many um communities are pilloried today so even though we've we've kind of we might say we've got beyond that and now we're celebrating this is it that aspect that we're now with that kind of degree of appropriating and taking on those that the, and of course we're using the fun part of the cultures then that becomes an expression of, of, of something that's pretty ubiquitous to this country and in, in here in the US and around the world. But it is actually does have its roots in that, as you say, that community trying to express solidarity with each other in the face of some horrific kind of uh, discrimination and, 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 uh, and, and othering, as you say. So it, um, now, so then we kind of talk about, is that the same thing as mm. how, Native American cultures, uh, African cultures are appropriated in terms of today's, or and, and even nowadays, Asian cultures are appropriated in the um, so by people that are not of that culture. And how is that viewed when they don't understand what the meaning? So some of the 
her some of the images that are used in some of these cultures have true deep spiritual meaning for people and to have them taken by somebody and express them in a way that is not purely respectful of their intention and their origin is something I could, I, you know, I don't relate to it because I haven't had to experience it. But you could just, if you take pause and you think about that, you just, you kind of, you think, okay, well, would if somebody stole something from my house and then used it in, a, in an inappropriate way, how would I feel? Well, you tell me, I mean, um, we in, in your culture where you come from, from the beautiful country of Australia, the instrument the musical instrument the the original people of 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 australia have been using for thousands of years has been co-opted into popular culture the didgeridoo you find them you find that played in 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 various other contexts do the original people of australia approve that i don't know um mm. or is that something where they say well wait a second this is ours and what are you doing to this Right, so I think the thin line is asking who are you taking it from? Do they know you're taking it? And are they okay with you taking it? And are they okay with you transforming that or, or, or embedding that in a new context? I'm not gonna get into the artistic realm of this because art by I think hum, human history has always been grown or expanded or, or went down new paths because we, took something other people created before us and saw the beauty in a part in parts of it we saw beauty that we took and, and made our own thing from it i think that is part of the artistic process but when it becomes something if, if you're borrowing credibility or if you're borrowing originality quote unquote um then that may be towing the line here what, what's been what's been the response in, in the original cultures of the Australian continent, right? Well, so here's a great example, um, Aboriginal art. And I think if we perceive people have kind of seen Aboriginal art, and I use those uh, words in, 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 you know, very carefully, Aboriginal art in the way it's expressed, whether it be musically or the sounds that are made by that didgeridoo or, or the actual physical expression of putting an image on, on a surface, is something that's not seen as art by Aboriginals. Of course, of course, the Aboriginal people um, use these devices as part, in a way, to pass on story, to pass on information to subsequent generations. So this is not really art. This is communication. This mm -hmm. is true history, true story. Mm -hmm. This is this is heritage. So. Yes, okay, it looks nice and it has a really a deep effect on us and it can if you if you're viewing any piece of art, I love art and and to look at it and and approach it in terms of okay, this is a lovely painting that a piece uh, that a, that an artist did. They're trying to express something that in that in, inspired them and influenced them at that time. But and then purely if you take it in in you know in, in this different setting where it's just you know, it was just a father painting something to pass on to the kids so they know where to find the water. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm simplifying it in the in in the in the very basic terms and uh, doing no respect to it. But see, that's the kind of difference. So then, mm. if an if an Aboriginal person comes into a house and they see a piece of art that that looks like that, they they will kind of say. That's interesting. Now, why would you hang that on the wall? <laughs> this is this is not really meant for that, although it's a beautiful piece of art in and of itself. So it's an expression, but it is a communicative piece. Yeah. Right. And then this is where I think whenever we we borrow something from a culture that is not ours, if we're inspired by something, let, let's give it a positive spin. Mm -hmm. It might be a smart thing to um, inquire with the originators of the culture how that would be perceived. So I'm not going to draw a blanket comparison. I, I believe as much as I understand Irish culture, and that's a little funny how people dress up as leprechauns and, and find their Irishness somewhere, even though they have no Irish heritage whatsoever. Um, and I, the feeling I have around this is about the same feeling that I see when in my native culture I go to like a traditional Bavarian celebration, you might call it Oktoberfest, you might call it something else. And I see all sorts of people around the world wearing lederhosen and dirndl dresses. And I'm wondering, do you have any idea what these...
tied on that end of the hip or on that end of the hip? Did you ever think about what all these other tchotchkes, or you might call them tchotchkes, what, what they mean? They all have a meaning. So it, it, it's been, when we borrow stuff, we sometimes deprive it of its original meaning, right? So and that's where I would say it, it might go too far. So let's look at another holiday. I'll, I'll call it a holiday here in the United States, which is often seen as a, a, a good excuse to party. Is is the fifth of May, Cinco de Mayo, in mm. in Spanish, where apparently a lot of people in the United States um, fall for the false assumption that it has something to do with Mexican independence, um, which it doesn't. <laughs> it simply commemorates a battle between the Mexicans of Puebla against the French army, and the Mexicans defeated the French. So that is a holiday for the people of Puebla not so much for the rest of the country. And it is often kind of taken out of context in North America and, and people dress up in ways that are, well, that supposed to look Mexican and yet they perpetuate somewhat negative stereotypes of the people of Mexico. And at that point, I believe it's, I think we're entering the territory of appropriation. I'm not sure mm. how you feel about this. Yeah, well, I think the um, we, you know, just like St. Patrick's Day and Cinco de Mayo, these are expressions on the surface of joy and happiness, right? So it's comfortable, comfortable for people like us to to say, "Well, that looks fun. I think I'll take part in that. That looks like a party," and we may even be invited. Um, here, here, Laura says, uh, "Greedy uh, has Irish heritage from the dad from uh, from a dad's side, yes, and it is the Holy Tr Trinity, yes." Um, so yes, so, so these are expressions of fun, and that and fun is uh, you know joy is comfortable. So, but you don't, and that's a, I guess I think if I was going to sit down and ask um, if somebody you know if, if somebody really steeped in Irish heritage or even the the the, the heritage of, of Latinx people, um, is it respectful to sit down and say, look, I, this looks like fun, this is great, but what is what does it mean for you first? And is it appropriate to me to join in? And you may be invited by these people, but to ask, be curious and say, now, interesting. So, but uh, I understand, like, can we talk about the origins of this, you know? And uh, I would like to do that so that then perhaps there's still a possibility to celebrate, but celebrate with that respect in the back of your mind and say, okay, this has some kind of dark origins. This has some... Um, some difficult parts and discussions that probably have its roots in what this, you know, the, and of course the joy is probably the celebration of the overcoming of these things. But you don't see people going into the difficult conversation with other communities when they're now, when they're still difficult, because that kind of isn't fun and it, and it isn't joyful. And, and, and we understand that that's a difficult conversation to have, but that's just as important to have than the than just being able to go out and fill you your glass full of green beer. Anyway, right. not that it's you know not that I don't like doing it, but it, you know it's a I, I certainly it's um it's certainly uh, you know we're we're curious people and we we encourage everybody to be curious. And I think if you actually it would mean more to me to celebrate something with somebody if I have a deeper understanding of what that celebration comes from. That's a personal right. view. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm, I'm guilty, well, to a certain degree, at least. I remember it, it's been a great tradition for us growing up as kids during carnival time, which this was before Lent started. So we're now, for the Catholics amongst you know what Lent is. Before Lent, there's carnival. Um, when I was a little kid, there was very few costumes to choose from where you masquerade. And it was, it was either you were police officer or you were um some kind of other uh, member of ymca uh, one of those characters which inevitably meant you were either a cowboy or a quote-unquote indian um and th that is something that was perceived as quite okay back in the 70s mm -hmm. um i'm dating myself and and our awareness around this has shifted right and Yet to my parents, when they, the, who are in their mid late seventies now, if I were to explain to them how that was not cool, how they allowed us to dress that way, or how they encouraged us to to masquerade that way back then, they may have trouble understanding. So I think it is only a process that has 
begun a few years ago that people have started to think a little deeper about how much borrowing, how much taking without asking is okay. And who do we ask and how do we ask the right questions? Mm. Well, let's face it, there's been enough taking without asking in the history of mankind to uh, to dig into. <laughs> it can be a big, uh, big topic. But it is representative, right, of... Um, uh, of basically, I think what we do as intercultural people, and and in understanding and learning, especially if we're moving to another country as well, right? There is that question of assimilation. You know, here in this country, people say if you come here, there are certain people that say if you come here, you must immediately speak English, you must immediately eat, dress, act, sound, you know, American, right? That, but and then there are other countries that say no. You know, this is you come here in your whole self. You, you get to celebrate your individual culture and the influences that you bring with it. And as long as it's respectful to the laws and, and, the, and the boundaries that we set in this country, and that's a fair assumption, then, you know, let's do that. Let's have those conversations. So, um, you know, I think uh, I'm all about exporting cultures all around the world, and I don't believe that it's going to even everything out. I don't believe that it's going to, everybody's going to be the same eventually. I believe that there is too many embedded cultures that mean a lot to the deep uh, psyche of people that this will continue to go on. We do it, you do it with your children, Christian. I do it with my, with my daughter in terms of the Polish side of things. It is, it, you know, I'm, it's important to me to pass on those things so that she does, she no, understands the origins, knows her heritage, and can then, as she grows, celebrate her Polishness in as much as she celebrates her US Americanness. And that and that that is valid, and you know perhaps Australianness, you know, if she wants to make Dad feel a little bit, you know, not <laughs> good every now and again, <laughs> perhaps maybe, perhaps maybe, you know, as as the will as the wind blows and the will finds her, that might be. Well, has she been to Australia? Has she been to Australia? Has, you know, has, has she been to Australia? She's been to Australia three times. Yes. Okay. Well, then she might just it might the the seat might. Um, pop at some point you never yeah, know we, we were having this discussion yesterday about uh, where we would might we would move to if we moved and uh, and someone brought up the uh, australia right everybody wants to go to australia and she goes well well australia is nice but it's too far from everything and as a kid that wants to travel and visit countries non-stop and you know i think the perception of like i don't want to be that far from the rest of the world, right? That's it's very a, that's close a... to New Zealand. It's very close to Indonesia <laughs> and Malaysia and Papua New yeah. Guinea and Absolutely. Philippines. Come on, there's, there's closeness. It is, but it's a perception thing, right? It's a long way. It's an island in the middle of nowhere. But uh, mm. anyway, that's. I thought it was an interesting response to that. She loves Australia. She loves her Australian family and uh, when we can get to see them. So, um, yeah, no, that, that, it's fine. And, and, of course, we have a lot of uh, Irish people in Australia who, just like you mentioned before, were pilloried just the same as they were here in the US, you know, and they were, they were seen as the enemy and they were, you know, and then they became any, any kind of trouble they caused then was as, 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 uh, ascribed to every Irish person, you know. Any, the, the one of the biggest um, events in terms of what you might call revolutionary events the Eureka Stocker was was driven by an Irishman, right? Now, of course, right. then after that, you know, we get this kind of, uh, you know. Isn't yeah. it funny, though, that the Irish were made out to be villains by those invaders, the fellow invaders from the other island, from right. the English and the Welsh <laughs> and the Scots. Well, maybe not as much from the Scots, but certainly from the English. So the English who colonized and... Um, subjugated the Irish for centuries, that made them out to be the villains abroad yet again. So that's yeah. um, may, maybe that's the Irish revenge on, on the English that there is an Irish holiday and not an English holiday. Very, very <laughs> possibly. That, okay. That's right. Shamrock possibly. on that. Yeah, have a have a have a have a Guinness on that. Just be just to be totally uh, stereotypical. Have a Guinness. Well, on that. here Laura <laughs> says she doesn't like it when people make it all about the drinking. So what else hmm. is it about then? So we we mentioned earlier. So St. Patrick yeah. was a bishop who Christianized the people of Ireland. He was sanctified later on, and he was a, a man who led a 
apparently, according to the records, as much as we can trust them, 1500 something years later, um, a man of, of, of a godly lifestyle, or at least uh, somebody who put others' interests before his own. And, and therefore, he's, he's remembered as a patron saint of the people of Ireland. Um, for me, and I mentioned this before on this program and in many other contexts as well, I, I hail from a part of Germany that also was, even though we were so close to the Roman Empire, the influence of, of early Christianity uh, in, in, in the early uh, or in the in the in the late ancient times, our people, the Bavarians, were not Christianized from the southern invaders from the Romans. We were Christianized by traveling Irish monks. So, our connection, our Christian common roots, so to say, um, are are with the Irish. So, even today, um, when there is another Oktoberfest in the traditional sense, you will find Irish people there mainly guarding the doors of the big beer halls because you don't want to mess with the fighting Irish. Um, so we, we have a long-standing tradition uh, that, that combines our two cultures. And it, no, it's not only about drinking, it's about um, common values, about fellowship, about, um, may, dare I say, support, not the weak, but those who are at a disadvantage against an overbearing power. The Irish, it was the English. With the Bavarians, it was all the other powers around it. So there, there's a, there's more to it. And thanks, Laura, for for bringing it up. It's it's more, uh, it's more than just the drinking. Yeah, absolutely. Or however you're celebrating, whether you celebrate or not, um, happy St. Patrick's Day to anybody. And whatever celebration, even if it's not St. Patrick's Day, if you're celebrating something today. We pass on our wishes and tell us what that is. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, questions, um, bloviations, um, objections, like we talked about yesterday. <laughs> your anger, um, your, your and, unfiltered yes. anger. Right at us. We're, we're, we're ready for it. We're ready for it. Um, well, here, here, here's a long comment by Sue. Let's bring that up. Yeah, Her German ancestor got short shrift, perhaps, in the time in US history they were othered. They went full U.S. assimilation, and she's just starting to relearn. Uh huh. Sue says she's probably more Irish blood than most here who say I'm Irish. Look at that, see? Mm. And she also says, happy St. Patrick's Day, chaps. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day to you as well, Sue. Whether you're Irish or not out there, respect other people's traditions, and if you're going to celebrate with them, sit down with them and ask them, where does it come from? What are we celebrating? Are we doing it in the way the inventors or the originators wanted it to? Or are we corrupting it into something just for commercial gain or just because we think we can and we have the power to do so? That would be the nasty flip side of that coin. Be, be, be a good celebrator with people, not against their will or against their intentions. And we're going to continue this conversation in a little bit. So if you feel like doing that, you can come over to the clubhouse. Now, some people might say this is this fad that it hasn't gone away yet. And this is just the in crowd talking to the fellow in crowd, the hipster bubble on the digital side of the spectrum. Yeah, some might say that. And that would be the first time that anyone accused me of being a hipster. Um, <laughs> But in all fairness, um, yes, the clubhouse is still a smaller club, yet growing. And some of you might want to weigh in. So we're going to be on clubhouse. And maybe, maybe I might even have a link that I can post in the chat box so you can find it. Well, Brett keeps the crowds engaged and <laughs> busy. I'll find the link that I can post there. Just stay tuned as you're watching me work my magic behind the scenes and hear the link. I must, I must, I must say that uh, Clubhouse is uh, something that I loop in and out of. It is uh, There's certainly some rich conversations in there, but a good thing about Clubhouse, you can be very uh, discerning about what you want to engage with and uh, who you want to engage with, um, but it can be a bit of a rabbit hole. So for those who haven't experienced Clubhouse yet, um, you know, take take to it with uh, with vengeance, but uh, with a discerning eye and ear. Uh, that's that's all I would say. So yeah. check check the comment box below on whatever platform you're watching this. Um, 
or if you're watching this, you know Brett and myself on the socials. Anyway, you'll find us. We're, we've been posting it on Twitter and on the other platforms as well. So feel free to join us. We're going to talk about not only St. Patrick's Day, but also about the dangers or the pitfalls of potential um, cultural misappropriation and what we can do about this, how we can be more aware of it, and how do we recover from it if we've done it. And we're probably not even aware that we did. We want to hear your stories. We want to hear how that's been going for you. And with that, I would say this one's in the can, right? Absolutely. Thanks again for joining us, everybody. Another day, another dollar. And tomorrow we'll be back uh, next two days. I think we've got a couple of guests coming um, and uh, from, from the Europe side of the world. And um, look forward to that. Looking forward to those discussions. As always, we like to learn from our guests. So, yes, that's in the can. Two chaps, many cultures. Thank you again for joining us. We will catch you tomorrow.